Good morning, New Mount Zion family. Welcome to this week's online Sunday School class. This class was developed from material supplied by the National Baptist Convention of America Press for instructors of Sunday School classes with guidance on how to best apply God's Word to our daily living and witnessing to the goodness of our God. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Glory be to an awesome God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We come humbly before your presence for thou art God, besides you there is none other. We thank thee for your mercy and bountiful blessings in the name of Jesus the Christ. Bless the under shepherd of this house of worship, daily holding up the blood stained banner for all to see God's mercy in our lives. We start this day claiming victory over whatever evil that would come against your will. We step out boldly on this day's journey Provide healing strength for those that fall ill along this journey. We accept your will in our lives, for your will surpasses all understanding and true righteousness. We ask that you hear our prayers, O Lord. Empower this, your obedient servant, to be provided with the blessings of rightfully dividing your words of truth for your glory, for our peace of mind that abides in your love for us and in the precious name of Jesus Christ. On this, the 24th day of October, in the year of our Lord 2021, this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. As it reads in Psalms 100, verse 5, of the King James Version of the words of God, let everyone under the sound of my voice say, Amen. Our senior pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcome you to the New Mount Zion family of born again believers, where we are with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. I am the Reverend Dr. George Berry and have been your facilitator for our classes this month. As we discussed examples of how to offer praise to our God for being a righteous God, providing us with the confidence to stand boldly before these trying times, knowing that God is real. He protects us from all harm, and he protects all who believe in the name of Jesus Christ. If you find a need for clarification on anything we have discussed today, please call or write to our address shown here. And we hope to answer your questions by return reply or on air, unnamed, if you request, or by mail directly, if you prefer. We are continuing our study of our quarterly theme, God's people offer praise. Amen. Under our quarterly theme of God's people offer praise, this week's lesson focus on long for and rely on God's presence. 
as we begin this class, to get in the right mood, we ask that you take a deep breath and let go. Now briefly, relate the things for which you are thankful to God for in your life, past and present. We are blessed to have a family, large or small, friends, a job, the country, despite its problems. We haven't been displaced by an earthquake, or perhaps you have even have neighbors that will even speak to you on a daily basis. Our lesson scripture for today will be found in the Old Testament book of Psalms, chapter 84. And our lesson title will be The Joy of Worship. Today's life need topic for today will be a discussion on what we sometimes long for. Although the historical context of Psalms 84 is unknown, it may have occurred during the reign of Hezekiah when Judah was being ravaged by the Assyrians. Events recorded in 2 Kings the 18th chapter and Isaiah the 36th chapter. The Assyrians destroyed most of the walled cities of Judah and Hezekiah and the king of Judah in the hope of preventing the same from happening to Jerusalem. Emptied both the temple and palace treasuries in order to pay the tribute demanded by the Assyrian king. This failed to stop the threats from their king. However, and soon his soldiers surrounded Jerusalem. The writer of Psalms 84, a Levite, according to history, and doorkeeper at the temple, may have fled Jerusalem at this time in order to protect himself and his family leaving behind the temple and the job he cherished. The psalmist longed to return to Jerusalem so that he could resume his role in the temple and once again be in the presence of God. He knew that the journey back would be difficult, but he expressed his confidence that God would provide whatever was needed so that his journey home could be successful. The joy of worship is our discussion at this, this time. And we start with the Levites. The Levites, the son of Korah, became great leaders in choral and orchestral music during the reign of King David. These descendants of Korah, the Levites wrote 11 hymns recorded in the Book of Psalms. Each one of the poetic songs expresses a sweet spirit of humility and thanksgiving as well as a sincere devotion and longing to be in close fellowship with God. The author of Psalms 84 started his writings by first stating two facts about the temple. It is beautiful and it is loved by those who love God. His physical body stood far away from the symbolic building 
yet his spiritual appetite longed to experience the nourishing fellowship of the true and living God. In the past, the psalmist lovingly observed birds nesting in the temple courts or perched near the altar. The building served as a place of refuge for the mother bird to give birth to her young. Also, the priests and the Levites both lived and worked in the sacred building. This writer envied their privilege to engage closely with the Lord, working in his house while free from outside worries or sadness, a place of peace and quietness. Secondly, the psalmist declared that his strength comes from God alone. During his challenging time, the psalmist depended on the living water from the spiritual well, finding vigor and energy from his primary source, the living God. The sojourner grew stronger with each passing days, despite life's uncertainties and tears. He traveled with a definite destination in mind, a genuine meeting with God. Finally, the writer declared that his confidence is in the Lord. He concluded his prayer by repeating an earlier thought, time spent in God's presence is precious. The Lord extends his hands, offering his children grace, peace, and hope throughout eternity. Psalms 84 speaks to leaders in God's house today. Those in charge need to do more than offer programs, social connections, entertainment, excitement, or self-improvement. Workers in God's house must arrange places and space for worshipers to meet with the Lord, enjoy being in his presence, and learn how to depend on him utterly. The joy of worship. We have some questions along that line. What are things you sometimes long for? What can you do to help these to be realized? And what do you need to keep in mind as you do this? Well, the study book gave us some possible answers to the following questions. On question one, you may note that we may have longed for improved health or for a peaceful world, for economic stability, or for a better job, or any job if unemployed. We may long for human companionship if we're lonely, for more fulfilling careers, or to be free from the stress that comes from today's uncertain times. We may long for a better relationship with others or even with our God. On number two, what can you do to help these to be realized? Well, sometimes we can improve our circumstances by taking advantage of opportunities for 
further education, by changing our habits, by doing what we can to improve our health or finances, by seeking or accepting help from others, including friends, pastors, professional advisors, and public employees. We also need to remain focused on the steps that we will take us to the, the things we yearn for. Addressing question three, the realization of what we long for often takes time. The path that takes us there may be accomplished or accompanied by difficulties. Following that path may require patience and endurance. We will need to be prepared for the rough spots we will encounter along the way. And we often can't succeed unless we seek and accept help from others, including God. He alone knows what we stand in the need of. A longing for home, in this case, God's presence. Psalms 84 starts out the first four verses, and I'll be using the NIV this this week for clarity and quickness due to the, the length of our study. Verse one says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh cry out for the loving God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. There's a still quietness comes over those verses. Although the circumstances that prompted this Psalms are unknown, this writer may have been forced to flee Jerusalem, leaving behind the temple where he served. The psalmist longed to return to Jerusalem and to the temple so that he could once again be in the presence of God. The psalmist also seemed to envy birds who made their nests in the temple near the altar and the place where God dwelled. Yes, the psalmist acknowledged that those who dwell in God's house will be blessed as he would once he returned to his home. A longing for God's presence. The questions related to the scripture that's been read already. What seems to be the context of this Psalms? What did the Psalmist long for? And what did some birds have that he didn't? You ought to know that. <laughs> And how did he respond to his knowledge of this?
Well, the suggested answer for question number four is the psalmist was apparently separated from the temple where he had served as a doorkeeper. It could be that a foreign power was threatening Jerusalem and that the psalmist was forced to flee the city in order to protect himself and his family. Question number five, what did the psalmist long for? He longed to return to Jerusalem so that he could resume his role in the temple and once again be in the presence of God. And what did some birds have that he didn't? <laughs> Sparrows and swallows made nests on the temple grounds and at the altar near the place where God dwelled. The psalmist seemed to envy them in this respect. He acknowledged they were blessed as he would be if he could be restored to God's presence. A confidence of provision that we have in God. Let's read verse five through seven. And I invite you to just close your eyes and feel the stillness. Blessed are those who strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Well, the psalmist acknowledged that his journey to Jerusalem wasn't going to be easy. It would take time. It would be a pilgrimage, not a jaunt, not a quick around the corner and back. His journey would pass through arid areas where there was little nourishment and very little water many tears would be shed along the way. The psalmist was confident that God was going to provide for his needs during the journey that he hoped would return him to God's presence in the temple. Good God Almighty. A confidence of provision, that's what he had he had this sense of confidence that what he needed would be provided. What did the psalmist compare his journey home to? Well, the suggested answer there is those who obeyed the Lord and set their hearts on making pilgrimage to Jerusalem would be blessed. But it would not be a jaunt. It would take some time to complete. What did he expect to experience along the way? The psalmist knew his journey would be accomplished by hardship. Nothing good ever comes easy. He would travel through arid areas where there was little nourishment or water to quench his thirst. There would be times when he would be moved to tears. What did he place his trust in? As he traveled along the path 
that he hoped would return him to Jerusalem, the psalmist was confident that God was going to provide whatever was needed so that he could reach his destination and once again be in his presence. God would take him from one place of nourishment to another, from strength to strength. A prayer for the king. Let's continue our scripture from the eighth to the twelfth verses. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in the courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he with hold from us, from those who walk is blameless. Lord God, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Yeah, the psalmist acknowledged the role the king would have in returning him to his service at the temple and prayed for God to look with favor on his anointed one. The psalmist reminded himself that it was better to be a doorkeeper in the temple, a service he loved, than to enjoy the fruits of living with the wicked. The psalmist knew that ultimately it was God who would be his shield. God was the one who would bring light into the darkness he was experiencing. Yes, we have darkness in trials and tribulations. The psalmist concluded with an observation as well as perhaps a commitment that those who long for and rely on God's presence will be blessed. A prayer for the king. Why did the psalmist pray for God to look with favor upon his anointed one? What temptation did he resist? What helped him to do so? And what did he note in the final verse of this psalm? Well, in verse 10, question 10, he recognized that the success of his pilgrimage was dependent in part on the actions of his king. He prayed for God to look with favor on his anointed one. Perhaps by granting his king victory over their enemies or by providing some form of protection. And the psalmist seems to know how easy it would be while separated from the holy city and the presence of God to live like the ungodly and enjoy the fruits of their wickedness. But he also knew how much better it was to be in the presence and kept his focus on his destination to once again be where God dwells. Feels good, don't it? Feels good, don't it, do my Zion? 
The psalmist noted that those who trusted in the Lord will be blessed. He reinforced his belief that those who long for God's presence and who rely on him in their journey to be with him will be blessed. He may have been voicing his personal commitment to do so. What I longed for. This is an excerpt from our study book and I'll read it to you after these questions. What are some things you long for in your relationship with God? What can you do to help these to be realized? And what do you need to rely on God for? Why is it critical that you do this? That's where this excerpt comes in because I found it to be right on point. And with the limited time we have, I condensed it down to what the Lord had me focus on. It says, what I longed for in the early days of COVID-19 pandemic, I didn't give much thought to how things were going to change as a result of being asked to stay home as much as possible, to wear a mask when not at home, and to practice social distancing when I was around others. <laughs> This may be similar to what the writer of Psalms 84 was experiencing when he wrote this lamentation. Something he valued had been taken from him. He longed for it to be restored. He yearned to return to the place he cherished and to once again dwell in the presence of God. He knew that the journey back to normal would not be easy, but ultimately he had to rely on God for the provisions required to make his journey successful. And so must we. On your notepad, list some things you long for in your relationship with God. Then, list what you can do to help these things be realized. What can you do to find favor with your God? Include on this list what you must rely on God for as you journey the path toward obtaining what you're longing for. You may share what you wrote with your family or friends as you discuss our class study. Use that as an opportunity to show them your God As we start to close, and we want to part with this phrase, rely on God in your journey with him or to him. And our key verse to take away Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. 
That's real clear. That's why I used the NIV. Rely on God in your journey with him or to him. Hopefully, we all long to be in God's presence. We should want to maintain a close and fruitful relationship with God and ultimately rely on him for whatever we have a need of. Having read God's provisions for your pilgrimage in your student book and if you completed the exercise, review what you wrote. If you haven't done the exercise as yet, then do so after our class today. You may have considered to quit starving or worrying and instead trust that God has your best interest in mind and will strengthen you to realize what your heart's desire is. He may in fact help you make room in your life to seek and enjoy being in his presence of God. You might even reflect on the work he has already done in your journey and getting closer to him successfully. Next week, we would like for you to read Psalms 149 verses one through five, and then chapter 150, verses one through six. And you'll be well prepared for next week's lessons. And we look forward to that. Now we've come to the end of this journey in understanding now let us pray. We thank you, Almighty God, for your desire to dwell with us and to bless our lives with such a leader as Pastor Larry Roundtree. Bless him, O Lord. Strengthen him, O Lord. We pray that his family is also blessed with peace, knowing that he strives to educate God's children on how they can make it to the end of the journey. We pray that our study today not be in vain and that each one that receive the instructions today will desire to be in your presence that all our students will do what they can to be in your presence lord god and stay there that ultimately they will recognize how they are relying on you god for the provisions required to make their spiritual journeys successful. Help us to tell somebody that we will live forever because of the sacrifice Jesus Christ, your son and our savior did on yonder's cross, died, rose again to claim victory over death to the only wise God and Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Together, we all say, Amen.
God bless everyone. See you next week and be careful. Amen. Amen. Amen again.